Hi everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. We're building an LBSC Titch locomotive, and in this week's episode, we'll cover how I made the little cylinder jackets here and the boiler jacket and the brass strips that hold it into place. I've had a lot of fun using the Benford 3-in-1 metal forming machine, actually from Vivor. You can see a separate video about that. But uh, this is kind of a long episode, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope it has a lot of useful information in it for you. As always, please ask any questions, and I'll do my best to answer. And please give me a thumbs up. If you have no questions, it just motivates me to keep on going. And uh, please pass the word. Help me grow the channel. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great week. As promised, uh, before I get into a lot of other stuff on here, this is a good opportunity for me to make the cylinder covers and the boiler jacket. So I've just been cutting out the highly technical examples using some grocery bag material and painter's tape. It's an easy way to do it. So now I've got some templates I can use and try cutting it out of some actual brass. All right, for the cylinder covers, I've decided to go ahead and make them as well. I think I'll make them first. Here's the template, the paper template for the left hand when I've taken it off. And I've just laid out the holes, the three holes. I'm going to use 080 screws and I'm just drilling in there very shallow, about 3 16 of an inch drilling and tapping. I've already done the other side. Let me show you over here. There we go. I at first I started to do the outboard edges and as you can see I realized um, I didn't thankfully I did not drill all the way through I realized that there's a screw that comes down here and I didn't want to be drilling into these screws so I just did the center and then so it's about 875 thou from the front and then the others are about three quarters of an inch in from either end drilling the holes in the cylinders it was very easy and fast I use this number 55 wire size drill bit that I just got brand new from my local Ace Hardware store. Uh, as you can see, I only I put tape on there, so I'm only drilling in 3 16 of an inch because that's the size of screws I, I'm using, and I didn't want to go too deep and get into the steam or exhaust passages. And for the taps, I've got this nice little set of Vermont taps here. got this off of eBay, and it has a a starter and a bottoming tap. That's what I'm using. I'm just using it handheld with a little bit of tap paste. Here's a pretty good picture of the underside of the locomotive. I've laid out some holes. I think I'll just use two holes on the bottom here. It should be sufficient. So we'll just drill and tap those. I used a little piece of eighth inch steel basically as an offset bar to make it easy and then I just used a dial caliper to Scribe those other two lines about three quarters of three eighths of an inch in from each end. Okay, so I finished drilling and tapping the holes, and then I've used the paper template and just basically just punched using a pencil, punched through the holes. And now I've transferred that to a piece of brass, and this will be my first attempt. Hopefully, it'll work. But just lay it out flat, and I'll drill the clearance holes first with a little block of wood here and then cut it out and bend it and see if it'll work for us. Okay, that's a wrap on the little cylinder jackets. Really pleased with how they came out. It wasn't that hard to make. And uh, I did have some trepidation about drilling the holes, but uh, this seemed to work out fine. I don't think I went into any of the jackets. Here's the opposite side. Looking good. This is brass sheet. It's uh, 32 thou, one sixteenth of, or one, one thirty, one thirty second of an inch thick, so 32 thousandths. Let me see if I can, well, I'm going to reposition the chassis carefully so you can see what the underside looks like. Okay, here we go with the chassis tipped on its side. It's kind of neat seeing everything. One thing I was worried about was oil running out all over the place, but I guess the little seal... The lid is pretty tight but this is what the underside looked like you can see I made a mark here with marker and I used my little three-in-one machine to put a little bend in this in in both of them there's a little flat area you can see that 
you can see it on that one pretty good. So I'll probably take these off eventually, rub buff them or you know rough them up a little bit and paint them with black paint when I get ready to finish the thing. But for now, I'm just going to leave them in brass. Kind of cool seeing all the innards. We haven't looked at this stuff in a while. Of course, the brake system is not mounted. Next up on the list of making jackets and stuff is to make a nice boiler jacket. And I've made this paper template. I've reinforced it in a couple of areas. And I notice I cut it back here to accommodate the smoke box which overlaps it a quarter of an inch and I, I'm not sure that this design will work for for sure but I think this will be good because the chassis line is just under here and those little clips will come up here so I'm hoping that that I can first make this all out of one piece of sheet metal and roll basically roll everything in a cylinder except leave these two little one inch long portions on either side, little tails so to speak, flat, and then that these will stick down and the clips will hold them. And I'll, like I said before, I'll probably make at least two brass bands, one around here and one here, maybe a third one there, I don't know, um, to hold it in place. But that's the, the template. I've, I've used my little X-Acto knife to free up the template to cut everything, trim, and now I can take it out off and lay it on the steel that I plan on using. Here I've got the little paper template laid out flat on a piece of a 22 gauge sheet metal. And I used the blue Sharpie just to make the outline of the cut. And I tried to mark basically where the center of the holes are because the easiest thing to do will be to drill those. I'm not sure if I have a hole drill big enough for that one, but we'll see. And I will mark, um, all, now that I've got the centers roughly marked, I'm also going to punt, do a, uh, use the spring-loaded punch to make a, a punch hole. This one will have to be a U-shaped cut here, but that's pretty, pretty much it for laying it out. The only other thing I do need to mark before I take this off is the slit right here. And, uh, everybody getting ready to use the... 14 gauge swivel head shears as you can see on this first cut that I made it does leave a little a wide gap so you want to mark your cut line and then put one of your your teeth alongside of that here I'll show you what I'm talking about and if you have headphones on be careful because this the noise is going to be loud here and also be extremely careful with sheet metal in general because it can cut you very easily. things. So I'll clean this up here in a minute and show you the rest. I put some gloves on just to protect my hands and you cut these little coils off the, the however you want to but I've got some nice shears here that I usually use. And these things will go straight in the trash because they're so um, like a thousand razor blades waiting to cut you. So now just the last little bit here. Actually, let's see if I can use the other shears for that. Again, headphone warning in case you have headphones on. square template what I'm gonna do you can see I got a little away from my line here 
I'm going to put this on the belt sander just to clean that up, just grind it to the line and also... Okay, the hole drilling went pretty well. I did use a hole saw. I used the inch and three-eighths hole saw there to cut this hole because I wanted it to be a little bit larger than the original template. I used seven-sixteenths for these two and I need to cut the edges on that. And I used three-eighths for the two where the clacks go. So now the, the big thing will be removing all the burrs cleaning all this plate up to get it ready to roll. And by removing burrs, I mostly mean filing because uh, you want to keep it flat and uh, not have any chunks that go through the rollers. Okay, for these parts, I'm, I decided to make little pie cuts. This is the part that wraps around the boiler and this is the part that goes down on the side. So I use the hand shears for that. So I'm making a straight cut right on the part that wraps around the boiler. There we go. I'll make the little pie cut over here. There we go. And see what the pie looks like and all right now I use the shears for this part I use the power tool time to grind that in. Alright, got the sheet metal laid out. The holes are drilled. The little notch for the upper water sight gauge there is cut. One thing I, rem I realized after I got to thinking about it, basically the whole thing needs to get rolled as a cylinder and then these parts where I wrote flat have to get flattened out later um, because these parts are wider than these parts. So what I was thinking originally, like, okay, well, maybe I can stop the rolling, but it'll it'll probably be easier this way. I'm gonna. There's plenty of demonstrations about rollers on the on the internet. The one big thing is since I've got the left tab here, I need to make sure. Keep in mind if you have anything that's not perfectly symmetrical with your cover, to make sure that you have the the inside part right so the, the the machine is gonna roll and put the curve this way this make the, a cylinder with this being the inside that's what we want so we need this to be upside down basically when we start it I tried um one had a funny story about the one some one of the pieces that we made for the Allen Mogul I had it flipped and I had to flatten it out and re-roll it and believe it or not it came out just fine so it was a very interesting experience so I'm going to, I'll just get this started, I guess, and let's see, the tension is these things here, so I want to loosen up so that it, it just slips, and then just a teeny bit, just so it, it just bites, or you can just feel a little pressure, um, it's very much of a thing by feel, and then you rotate this knob and it's not tight enough I can tell because it's not pushing it all the way through but rotate this arm and this is very much as they say a repetitive repetitive or iterative process you rotate it through like so it's still not tight enough clamp it down a little more and the back roller back here is what puts the actual roll into the metal. So I'll just do one. And you can reverse it. You don't have to remove the thing 
that's one nice nice feature since I will be um, rolling basically the whole thing as a tube and then flattening these pieces out later I can keep it in there and just go back and forth until I get a cylinder made so I'll cut it off right there and bring you back when we're a little closer to being done okay it actually came out pretty good um, I did put a little bit of a twist in there I'm gonna try to I've reversed it around to try to twist it out and I gave it a few taps with a hammer a little plastic faced hammer but overall I'm really pleased since I haven't used this thing at all this is the first ever rolling experiment with the Binford machine so I'm gonna play, play around with it a little bit more then I'll take it off and we'll test fit it on the boiler and I'll show you how that looks but it's just a, a matter of successive um, rolling operations and adjusting the the knobs in the back to to increase the diameter of the roll and I what the the twist came because I got I didn't realize I was doing this but I got a little bit off and it pushed it bent it a little bit started to make a cone basically is what it boils down to well, here's the jacket so far pretty pleased with how it came together I used the Dremel tool to enlarge the little holes there on the side they're not terribly bad not very unsightly I think maybe I can get by with a little brass escutcheon or something over it but there's a lot of fine-tuning that needs to get done here to make it fit better I just realized you might see the black magic marker there sharpie marker I need to trim off a little bit a few bits and pieces and as you can see I'm using zip ties to try to compress the steel into place and there we go probably need to get some bigger batter when I did the Allen Mogul over there I used some HVAC big thick HVAC twist ties we'll zip ties like this so I'll stop now and I'll be back with the next evolution as we continue to fine-tune the jacket well it's Monday night and I came back and I fitted these hose clamps and got a really nice fit I had to trim a little bit away from the front edge the leading edge of the boiler jacket in order to provide the clearance for the smoke box to fit on there properly but I just did it freehand I used some tape to mark off the space and freehand with these shears here there's a pile of stuff that I've trimmed off most of it was from around the front the smoke box area there this is tonight and the other part I realized was over here I had made this little skirting too long so I've trimmed that off and also trimmed off some of the area under the throat plate there so I think I've got it fitting really nicely now I'm gonna probably work on it just a wee bit more do some filing and sanding just to to clean it up a bunt a little bit and so what we'll do, in case you're wondering, I'm planning on putting some strips of brass in between the copper boiler and the steel jacket. That's what I did on my Allen Mogul over there. I put some, actually my friend Fred is a great welder, and he welded on some strips of eighth inch thick steel around. And uh, I won't need anything quite that big here, but just a couple strips of brass to go around the cylinder of it pretty much where these bands are just to provide a little separation between the boiler and the jacket there's my allen mogul i keep talking about and one of the things i wanted to show is see these brass bands that across the boiler these are strips that i cut out and i fastened on using a little clamp system underneath it's going to be hard to show that and uh, looking at them now i need to polish them but it's just basic brass and let me show you what it started out its life as I was at my one of my old favorite hardware stores one day which has since closed down and somebody had salvaged a bunch of brass door kickers these are the things they used to screw onto the bottoms of doors to um, you know, prevent boot marks and such when people would go through like in a school or an office building well they had these were big pieces and they were 
on sale for like five dollars because they were salvage, salvage scrap but it was a great buy so I bought one you can see here these are some of the original ones with the screw holes and stuff in it so these are the strips I cut them into like three quarter inch wide it's 44 thou thick and it shines up really nice of course these are the parts that had holes in them and I can't couldn't use those for the decorative function but what I'm thinking is cut these little strips into like cut them in half three eighths inch and then into the proper length and use them as the underneath part for the boiler so that's kind of what I'm going to do now I'm going to cut up some strips probably start with this one since it's already bent then I can roll it in my rolling machine and who knows for the top strips I may do the same thing I may cut off some three uh three eighths inch or so strips to go across and fasten but pretty creative use of old brass never want to let anything like that go to waste okay so we got the brass strips cut I cut them last night and um, not really super accurate but cleaned them up a little bit took the, some of the ridges off of them and now I'm just going to use my three-in-one machine here to roll them curl them a little bit I won't again I won't go through the whole process but I'll just go back and forth it's a fun machine to use just tightening and tightening about a half a turn on the red knobs that raise the roller bar in the back up and it gives it more of an arch that way about a half a turn each time I sprayed a little WD-40 on the rollers Back and forth we go. I'll just do each of these. The wide one I cut, this is shorter than the other, so I put this over the barrel of the, the back of the boiler, so to speak. That's my intention anyway. So we'll just go back and forth and curve these things. I'll do all three of them, get them nice so they nice ring shape and um, be able to fit them on the boiler and then put the steel jacket on top. Here we go. I'm doing the the smaller rings, just about, as you can see, just about have them done. They, I decided to go ahead and do both of them at, at a time. And I realized one thing that's significant about this, these things are 44 thou thick, so they're much thicker than this machine is supposed to be able to handle, which is only 22 gauge. I don't know what gauge that would be, but it's a lot thicker than the, you know, 22 gauge steel is 32 thousandths. So this is a 44 thou. Anyways, you can see it's doing a nice job. They're thin, and it's relatively soft brass, but it's done a great job making those. So I'll take them off and clean them up a little bit, and we'll try them on the locomotive. Here's a little boiler with the brass bands on it. I haven't test fit it yet, but this gives you the idea of that I was going for anyway. So you can see how just the bands alone will create a nice airspace and they're basically in the positions where I'm thinking I'll have the actual bands across the top of it. I'll probably slide this one a little further forward. You can see the brass bands. Well you can see that one underneath here and they give a nice fit. <laughs> I wish I hadn't have enlarged those holes. The original ones may have done just fine but we'll see about that. Anyway the rest of it it fits great. One thing I did, I took the, the piece, the large piece that I made to go over the wagon top of the boiler here where my thumb is tapping. Obviously I took that out because it was making the already, the cover already bows out some and makes the little space that we need for the air gap. So it really didn't need anything extra. With that extra material in there, it made a poor fit for the top turret fitting there. So. I think we're about there. I made a note to grind a little bit off the steel jacket right here, but as you can see it fits nice with the smoke box and everything. So the next thing up is to be will be to make some actual brass bands similar to the ones that I made for my Allen Mogul. And they're basically just brass bands. With the Allen Mogul they were, they were so big that I was able to graft on a few of these screw clamp pieces 
Um, with the as small as all this is, that that would not be practical. So I think I'm just going to use some brass strips and then blocks that I drill and tap and make a little screw and clamp assembly. But I'll show that in a little bit. Okay, getting ready to do to make the little bands to hold the cover on. This is one of the pieces of brass that I showed in the earlier clip, one of the basically scrap pieces. I've decided the bands, the, a good width for them will be just over a quarter of an inch, about 300 thou. So I marked it out and I just bandsawed it here, just very carefully, slowly, and staying as close as I could to the line. And it came out really good. I will have to sand it a little bit to clean it up, obviously, but... This is a good amount of raw material there to, to make the three bands out of. And I still have some left. And just a quick little work with the uh, little orbital sander, portable orbital sander. I've got this strip of brass looking pretty shiny. It's a little twisty, but I'm going to have to anneal it anyway um, when I get ready to cut it into strips and then solder on the little brackets. But... Uh, I'll take, I'll take the twist out and I'll have to polish it again, but at least I got the crud off of it. Alright, here's the first of the clamps, the three that I plan to make. It's not shined up yet, but all I did was drill and tap a number 3 by 48 hole in each side, right in the center, about an eighth inch up. Made a little quarter inch tab. Now I need to carefully fit it on and screw it on. I'll it's going to be a two-handed operation to say the least, so I'll bring you back and show you how that works. Okay, there's the band kind of joined together. I did it on the top to make it easier to reach, and obviously I loosened one of the hose clamps. So now I'm just going to slide this around to the bottom and tighten it and remove that middle hose clamp. I'll show you what it looks like when I do that. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. I'll have to cut that screw a lot shorter obviously but I use some one inch long 348 screws I got from McMaster car so now just to make two more of them looking pretty sweet I think